Three guys in their mom's kitchen are building an MMO. It gets extremely popular. So popular that it gets too expensive for them to run on their own. What do they do? I don't know. I never thought I'd get this far. I'd like to introduce you to the early years of RuneScape where computers were lit on fire, customer support set unsolicited nudes to players, and just about everything that could go wrong did go wrong. As you may know, RuneScape was originally ran solely by Andrew Gower. While I was looking for a picture of Andrew to put in this video, I googled his name, and this guy popped up. Even though Andrew's Wikipedia page comes first. For some reason, he doesn't have a picture, so I guess the other guy shows up first, despite our Andrew Gower being a multi-millionaire. Okay, rant over, back on top. Topic. The updates from when it was just Andrew running the game were a little bit odd. Originally when you joined RuneScape you had to pick a class, which more or less gave you a starting bonus in certain skills depending on what you picked. Soon after, all of RuneScape was made into a PvP area, with the only safe zone being Lumbridge. If you didn't like it, you could choose for your account to be non-PvP forever. This obviously in the long run didn't work. My favorite of all is from November of 2001, in which Andrew Gower basically says, Fuck you guys, I'm tired of your shit. He said, the message boards are a cesspit and I'm tired of moderating them. So they're deleted. I'm tired of people getting hacked. I've removed the web login. You can only log into your account from the game client now. Oh, also, you guys are making public chat unbearable, so now you're just not allowed to talk about anything real life related. Chat is purely for medieval role-playing now. I'd just like to imagine if he saw Winter Todd's chat today. Pretty much all of these features got reversed and Andrew got some help. That actually just sounds like he got sent to therapy. I mean, his two brothers, Paul and Ian, joined the team. But now the game had a money problem. The ads on the website weren't making enough to keep RuneScape open anymore, and the game was so popular they needed to hire outside help. Which, if you didn't know, you need money for. The Gower brothers, all within the same week, launched the paid version of RuneScape, purchased an office space, and started hiring employees all while really having no business experience. Andrew was in charge of interviews. It was him, a desk, a laptop, two chairs, and a completely empty room. The first candidate comes in, sits down, and Andrew says, can you type something for me? Watches him do it, and goes, brilliant, you're hired. This employee came to be known as Mod Ian, not the same person as Ian Gower. When I started, there was one other person, and that was it. Yeah. We didn't have any internet. There was, uh, what? Know, we, 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 no, I mean, RuneScape was running off server, and then it was like the, that week, some point, we got dial-up. Side note, in the video of all these mods being interviewed about early RuneScape, Monmark is wearing a Star Wars-themed minion shirt. This is like the one day of the year you shouldn't wear that. Two million people have seen you wear this monstrosity. Anyway, Modian is then led to his desk where he's told, oh, there's no internet, but you can start assembling your computer. This was the early 2000s. It's not like these days where every 13 year old knows how to build a computer. It went generally okay though. Most of the people they hired were pretty tech savvy. Except for that one time where an employee plugged in their heatsink fan wrong and soon after it burst into flames. Here's the box with your computer in it. Assemble your computer. And the kind of people Jagex was hiring were generally capable not making it catch fire except that one time. I really don't know how you live that one down. You're just forever known as the guy at Jagex who lit their computer on fire the first day of the job. Andrew Gower was also known among employees for the fact that he used five monitors and always had some kind of, and I quote, thumping trance music playing in his office. It's basically today's equivalent of a Bodhi stream. A little bit later, things are starting to seem normal at the Jagex office. Then Jagex and popular web browser game site, Miniclip, strike a deal. RuneScape is going to be featured on Miniclip, on the homepage. The game hits another massive spike of growth, full of kids that have no clue what they're doing and have probably never played an MMO before. Even though the player support team had 41 members, they got overwhelmed really fast. Well, actually it was 41 until the only woman on the team quit. Moving on, back then Jagex reviewed every new account name to check for offensive ones. Overnight, it went from maybe a few dozen a day to over a thousand. The quality assurance team didn't have much luck either. It had four members, but one got fired for... Well, there's no easy way to say this. He was sending unsolicited nudes to customers. I really don't know how this guy didn't think he was gonna get caught. If someone's balls showed up in my RuneScape inbox, you better believe I'll be emailing back asking for a lifetime membership to not say anything. Now the content team. They might have had the collective worst time of all. This was long before the days of version control, RuneScape test worlds, and other ways to make it easier for the team to work together. To keep it simple, every major part of RuneScape was split into its own separate file. For example, to edit the login screen or something related to logging in, you'd need the login.rs2 file. Or to add music, you'd need the music.rs2 file. There's a lot of files that, as a result, would frequently be needed by multiple team members. 
but only one person could have the file open at a time. So if you need to edit that file, you either have to shout around the office asking who's using it, or email the entire team asking to borrow it. A problem that would happen a lot is with the previously mentioned login.rs2 file. If someone broke something in the code, nobody could log in, so to test things, the team would have to wait until it was fixed, which could actually take quite a while depending on the problem. Even worse, if someone breaks something and decides, I'll fix it after lunch, and leaves the file open on their computer, that's an hour that nobody else can touch that file and the person that broke it isn't working on it. As the team grew, this problem got pretty bad. The specific person I maybe feel the worst for though is the release manager, the person who puts all the files together before an update launch and makes sure the game actually runs. Which doesn't sound too bad, except for when it comes to incomplete updates. If someone hasn't finished an update, the manager has to go back and comment out all the code referencing it and fix anything that they might have broken in the process. Mod Ash, who was release manager at the time, says his worst moment was the week a big smithing update was coming out and the Zoger Flesh Eaters quest was in development. Due to a lot of issues, he spent about 7 hours making the game work again. The longer it takes for him to do this, the less time the QA team has to actually test it. Which is already not a lot of time because a quarter of their team is sending pictures of their wang to customers. As the game grew, more bugs started to pop up. Along with the small harmless ones came a few pretty bad major ones. At the time, Andrew Gower was the only person on the team authorized to push hotfixes to the game. So if a major bug was discovered by player support at midnight, Andrew would get the call to come hotfix it. Which you know, obviously after a few times he went don't call me and delegated the job to the system admin from there the system admin reached out to a few other staff members saying hey if there's a problem can we call you to come fix it and then I'll publish it mod ash was one of the very few who agreed June 6 2006 the Falador massacre a player is running around Falador killing other players due to an at the time unknown glitch mod ash gets a call saying hey can you come and fix this another mod picks him up with their car brings him to the office he gets there assesses the situation and fixes it Where's the disaster? It's from what happened before Ash handled it. The support team was all hands on deck trying to mitigate problems. They were logged in saying, hey everyone, run to the bank, deposit your stuff, and log out. Do you see the problem there? You can get killed on your way to the bank, so just log out. You can't die if you're not logged in. As for the player killing everyone, an easy way to fix this is to just log them out, right? Slight problem. The game kept telling whoever was running the command that he was still in combat, so it couldn't be executed. Now what did player support do next? They logged in and kindly private messaged him to stop. If you think all of this so far was insane, Jagex had the idea to put interns on their content development team, which resulted in some of RuneScape's most iconic quests, horribly offensive references, and an early termination from the program. I have a full video about that on screen right now. A huge thank you to everyone that's downloaded Raid Shadow Legends using the links that have been in my last two videos. On screen now, you'll see the top 10 players that have done just that. And a especially big thank you to the top three, No Wub for Kitty, Severance One, and Dry Caillou. For everyone else, if you want to help me a lot, please do download it before the campaign is over.